Mirror life. Huh. I gotta admit, it sounds like something straight out of Star Trek. Like, flipped molecules, opposite life forms. Is that really a thing? Well, it might sound like science fiction, but the concept of mirror life is something scientists are actually exploring. And it all boils down to this thing called chirality. Chirality, right. I vaguely remember that from uh, high school chemistry. But how does that connect to mirror life? Well, many of the molecules that are essential for life, like amino acids and sugars, they exist in two forms that are mirror images of each other, kind of like your left hand and your right hand. Okay, yeah, I see that, but how does that lead to a whole different kind of life? See, all life on Earth uses only one of those chiral forms, what we call left-handed amino acids and right-handed sugars, and that's what's called homochirality. But mirror life, it would use the opposite forms. So instead of, say, left-handed amino acids, they would have right-handed ones, and the sugars would be flipped, too. Exactly. It's like imagining a whole other biosphere, but built on a completely different set of building blocks. But how could that even work? Wouldn't those opposite molecules just, like, fall apart or something? Actually, they're pretty stable, and scientists have been making these mirror image molecules, synthesizing them in labs, for years now. Wait, so you're saying they're making these mirror molecules in a lab? For real? Yeah. And it's not just simple molecules either. Researchers are making some pretty amazing progress in synthetic biology, like building complex structures from scratch, viruses, and even bacteria. Hold on, if they can build viruses and bacteria from our regular molecules, does that mean they could do the same with these mirror molecules, like create whole mirror organisms? It's definitely a possibility that some scientists are taking pretty seriously. Okay, now that's where I started to get a little creeped out. I mean, creating life forms that are like the opposite of everything we know. What if they, I don't know, got out? It's a valid concern and one that scientists are definitely aware of. There are definitely some potential risks we need to think about with mirror life. Like what? I mean, what could go wrong here? Well, imagine a mirror bacteria. Our immune systems and the antibiotics we use, they wouldn't even recognize it. They could be totally immune to our defenses. You're saying they could make us sick and we'd have no way to fight back. It's a definite possibility. And it's not just bacteria either. Imagine if mirror cyanobacteria got a foothold in the environment. They could start producing mirror sugars that our bodies can't even process. So it's not just about getting sick, it's a potential ecological disaster. This is starting to sound like a bad sci-fi movie. It's a serious concern for sure, but it's important to remember that there's also a potential upside to exploring mirror life. There could be some real benefits. Benefits? What could possibly be good about creating something that could wipe us out? Well, one major area is medicine. Mirror image organisms could be used to make what we call enantiopure drugs. Enantio what now? Enantiopure drugs. A lot of the medications we use today are what we call chiral, which means they exist in those left and right handed forms. But often, only one of those forms is actually effective or safe. So you're saying these mirror organisms could produce drugs that would work better and have fewer side effects. Exactly. It could revolutionize how we treat all kinds of diseases. But wouldn't those drugs be made of, you know, mirror molecules? Would our bodies even be able to use them? That's where things get really interesting with this whole chirality thing. Okay, how so? Well, think about it. If mirror life is using the opposite forms of molecules, their biological systems would be flipped too, right? So a mirror drug, it wouldn't interact with our bodies in the same way as a normal drug would. You're saying it's not just about the drug itself. It's about how it interacts with our mirrored biology. Precisely. That's a big jump. I mean, making a mirror molecule in a lab is one thing, but figuring out how it works in a whole organism, that's a whole other level. It definitely is. But yeah. that's what makes this research so fascinating. We're talking about changing medicine as we know it, maybe even our understanding of life itself. You're saying we could learn more about how life works by studying these mirror organisms. Absolutely. Comparing mirror life to our own, we might be able to figure out why life on Earth evolved the way it did, and maybe if there are other possibilities out there in the universe. Okay, that is pretty mind-blowing, I'll give you that. Yeah. But, going back to the risks for a second, you were talking about mirror bacteria being resistant to our antibiotics. Isn't there a chance these things could cause a global pandemic? It's a possibility we have to take seriously. We would be introducing something totally new to our environment. And we'd have no idea how it would interact with everything that's already here. Exactly. That's why scientists are stressing the need for strict safety protocols in any research involving mirror life. But how do you even contain something like that? I mean, we see how easily normal viruses spread. What's to stop a mirror organism from escaping a lab and just multiplying out in the world? It's a good question and one that researchers are trying to figure out. 
The goal is to develop ways to contain them that are strong enough to prevent any accidental release. Containment strategies like what? Well, one idea is to engineer them with dependencies. Like they need a certain artificial nutrient that doesn't exist in nature. That way, if they escape, they can't survive on their own. So kind of like a built-in kill switch. You could think of it that way, yeah. But it's not just about containment, it's about monitoring them carefully, doing risk assessments at every step of the research. But what if something goes wrong? What if one mutates and figures out how to survive outside the lab? That's why ongoing research and monitoring is so crucial. So we'd essentially be using the whole planet as a lab. Well, it's not quite as simple as that. But it does seem like there's a pretty big chance for things to go very wrong. Any scientific advancement comes with a degree of risk. But if we're careful and think about the consequences, we can minimize the risks and hopefully unlock the potential that mirror life might hold. Unlock the potential. But how do we know if mirror life is even possible to begin with? You mentioned making mirror molecules, but has anyone actually created a whole self-replicating mirror organism? Not yet, no. That's probably one of the biggest challenges facing scientists right now. So this is all theoretical right now. We don't know for sure if it's even possible to make a living mirror organism. It's incredibly complex, for sure, but that's part of what makes it so interesting. We could be pushing the boundaries of how we understand life itself. Okay, but how do they even plan to do that? Go from one molecule to a whole living, breathing thing. Well, it's a step-by-step -step process. They're starting with the fundamental building blocks, you know. Like DNA and proteins. Exactly. They're working on making mirror versions of those and figuring out how to put them together into functional structures. But wouldn't those just be static? How do they get them to, you know, come alive? That's where things get really tricky. We're talking about recreating the incredibly complex processes that allow cells to function, to replicate, and to interact with their environment. It's like trying to build a car with all the parts backwards. You might be able to put it together, but there's no guarantee it'll run. That's a great analogy. It really shows how complicated life is. But scientists are making progress. Like what? What kind of progress are we talking about here? Well, for example, researchers have successfully created mirror image ribosomes. Ribosomes. Refresh my memory. Those are the cellular machines that build proteins. So they've got a mirror version of one of the most basic parts of life. Yep. And that's a major step forward. Does that mean they're close to creating a whole mirror organism? That's a step in the right direction, that's for sure. But we're still talking about a long road ahead, right? Oh, definitely. There are still a lot of hurdles. Like what? Give me an example. One of the biggest ones is figuring out how to create a mirror version of the cell membrane. Why is the cell membrane so important? Well, the cell membrane, it separates the inside of a cell from the outside world. It controls what goes in and out. So you can't have a living cell without a working cell membrane. Exactly. And creating a mirror version of that is incredibly difficult. How so? What makes it so tough? Well, it has to be made of mirror lipids, which are these fatty molecules, but it also has to interact with mirror proteins and other mirror molecules in the right way, you know, according to the rules of mirror biochemistry. So it's not just making the individual pieces. It's about making sure they all work together in this flipped system. You got it. It's a massive undertaking. Like, are you saying it's possible? That we could actually make a living, breathing mirror organism in a lab? It's definitely a goal a lot of scientists are working towards. But what about the ethics of all this? Mm. Is it even right to mess around with something this fundamental, this potentially dangerous? That's a debate that's going on in the scientific community right now. What are the main arguments on both sides? Well, on one side, some believe the potential benefits, especially in medicine, outweigh the risks. They say we have a responsibility to explore this new scientific frontier, to use it for good. What about the other side? Others argue that the risks are just too big. They point to the potential for ecological disaster, pandemics, unintended consequences we can't even imagine. They think it's too dangerous and we should proceed extremely cautiously, if at all. So classic risk versus reward. Exactly. And it's a decision society as a whole needs to be involved in. But how do you even start that conversation? I mean, how do you explain something as complicated as mirror life to people who aren't scientists? It's a challenge, but it's crucial we figure it out. We need to have open, honest communication. But how do you do that without scaring people or dumbing down the science? It's a tough balance. But I think we need to focus on the potential good that could come from mirror life while also being straight up about the risks and how important careful research is. But what about the things we don't even know to ask about? The unknowns. That's always a factor in science. 
But that's not a reason to be afraid to explore. It's true, there's always that element of the unknown. But what if we create something we can't control? Something that ends up hurting people or even being deadly? That's why responsible research is so important. But what does responsible even mean when we're talking for something as radical as mirror life? It means being careful, taking it slow, doing thorough risk assessments every step of the way, and having backup plans in case things go sideways. But what if those plans don't work? What if we end up making something we can't contain? That's a natural fear to have. But it's important to remember that science is all about discovery. Okay. But how do we make sure those discoveries don't lead to, you know, the end of the world? By being careful and taking responsibility for what we create. But how do we even define responsibility in this situation? Who decides what's responsible and what's not? That's a complicated question, and there's no easy answer. But it's one we need to figure out, right, before we get in too deep. Absolutely. It's a question that scientists, policymakers, ethicists, and the public all need to be a part of answering. Okay, so let's imagine for a minute that we do figure out how to create a stable mirror life form. What would it even look like? Would it be like a mirror image of us? Or something totally different? It's tough to say. We're talking about a hypothetical form of life here. It could evolve in ways we can't even imagine right now. But wouldn't it still be bound by the same laws of physics and chemistry as everything else? Of course. But those laws don't dictate the specific forms that life can take. So it could be something truly alien, like nothing we've ever seen before. It's definitely a possibility. But what about the environment? Could it survive in our world? That would depend on a few things. Like what? Well. For one, the specific type of organism we're talking about and what it needs to survive. So some mirror organisms might be able to handle our environment, but others might not. Right, and it also depends on whether or not they could find food and resources that work with their mirrored biochemistry. So they couldn't just like eat our food or breathe our air? Not necessarily, they might be able to, but it would depend on the organism and how it processes energy. So we're back to that compatibility problem. Yep. Okay, say we do make a mirror organism that can survive here. What happens next? Could it reproduce and spread? That's a tough one to answer. It would depend on how it reproduces and if it could compete with life that's already here. So you're saying it's possible for a mirror organism to outcompete our own life forms and take over? We can't rule that out, no. But how likely is that to actually happen? Hard to say. There are a lot of unknowns here. It's all hypothetical. But it's something we should at least think about, right? Definitely. Okay, so we've talked about the good stuff that could come from mirror life the dangers, the ethics, anything else we should cover. One thing we haven't touched on is, well, the possibility that mirror life is already out there. Hold on, what? You mean like right now? Some scientists are looking into that very idea. But how? Wouldn't we have found it by now? Not necessarily. Mirror life would be really hard to detect with the tools we have now. Why is that? Because it would be made of molecules that our instruments aren't built to pick up. So there could be a whole shadow biosphere out there and we wouldn't even know it. It's a possibility and kind of a creepy one too, if you think about it. But how would we even start looking for something like that? We could start by searching for signs of, well, opposite homochirality. So like molecules that are right-handed instead of left-handed. Exactly, or finding organisms that use those molecules to build themselves. Where would we even look for that kind of thing? We could start with extreme environments here on Earth. Places where life as we know it struggles to exist. Like the bottom of the ocean or those super hot springs. Exactly. Those are places where we might find life that's completely different from what we're used to. What about other planets? Could mirror life exist out there somewhere in space? Absolutely. In fact, some scientists think it might be more likely to find mirror life on other planets than on Earth. Because the conditions on other planets are so different from what we have here, it's possible that life on those planets might have evolved to use the opposite forms of molecules. So finding alien life just got a whole lot more complicated. It did. And finding mirror life, whether it's here or on another planet, would totally change how we see the universe and our place in it. Okay, let's say we do find evidence of mirror life. Then what? Well, we can't really answer that until we actually find it. But it would be huge, right? Scientifically speaking. Oh, it would be one of the biggest discoveries ever. But what would it mean for us? For humanity. It would make us rethink everything we know about life. It would force us to accept that we're not alone in the universe and that life can exist in ways we never even considered. So it would be a scientific and philosophical revolution all at once. Exactly. But practically speaking, what would we do? 
Would we try to talk to them, learn from them? Would we try to use them for our own purposes? Those are all questions we need to think about very carefully. But those would be decisions that would have to be made by everyone, right? Not just one country. For sure. The discovery of mirror life would affect everyone on Earth. So we could be talking about a complete shift in how our species sees itself. Exactly. Okay, we've really gone deep on this mirror life thing. It's a lot to process, but it's also incredibly interesting. It is, and I think it's only going to become more relevant as time goes on. All right, so what's the one key takeaway you want our listeners to remember from this conversation? The most important thing to remember is this. Mirror life challenges how we understand life itself. It makes us face the fact that we might not be alone in the universe, and that life might be far more varied and strange than we ever imagined. So we should be more curious, more open-minded, and more willing to explore what we don't know. That's it, exactly. Well, I think that about wraps up our deep dive into mirror life for today. It's been a pleasure talking with you. So mirror life could really turn our whole understanding of life in the universe upside down. If there could be life forms out there built on completely different molecules, what else could we be missing? That's the really mind-blowing part. It opens up so many possibilities. But if it's so hard to find, how do we even start looking for it? Well, we could start by looking at extreme environments here on Earth, you know, places like those deep sea vents or hot springs, even acidic pools. Life as we know it has a tough time surviving in those places, so maybe mirror life could have a better chance. So we're talking about looking for life that's not just different on a molecular level, but can actually live in places that would kill us. Exactly. And who knows, maybe we've already found evidence of it without realizing it. What do you mean? There have been some instances where scientists have found molecules that just don't fit with our current understanding of biochemistry. Like what? Can you give me an example? Sure. Some meteorites have been found with organic molecules that have an excess of right-handed amino acids, which is the opposite of what we normally see in life on Earth. So you're saying these space rocks could actually have traces of mirror life on them? It's a possibility, but a very debated one for sure. But even if we find those weird molecules, how do we know for sure they came from something living? Couldn't they have been formed in some other way? That's a good point. It's hard to say for sure that mirror life exists just based on a few molecules. We'd need more solid proof, like fossils or even living organisms. Okay, so let's say we do find proof of mirror life. What would we do then? The first thing would be to study it really carefully, figure out how it works, how it evolved, how it relates to life as we know it. Wouldn't that be super difficult, though? I mean, we're talking about life forms built on a totally different set of rules. It would be an immense challenge, no doubt, but that's what makes it so exciting. We could be on the verge of completely changing how we understand life. Okay, so putting aside the scientific stuff for a minute, what about the more practical implications? Would we try to, I don't know, talk to these mirror life forms, learn from them? Those are questions that would need a lot of careful thought, we'd have to figure out the risks and benefits before even thinking about interacting with them. Risks like what? Well, first off, we have no idea how they'd react to us. They could be hostile, even dangerous. So it's like that classic alien invasion story, but with a twist. Kind of. But even if they're friendly, there's the risk of contamination. Contamination. Yeah, if we're not super careful, we could accidentally introduce our own germs into their environment, or they could introduce theirs into ours. And then that could be bad for both of us. Potentially. We're talking about two entirely different systems here. Something harmless to one could be deadly to the other. It sounds like we'd be walking a really fine line. <laughs> on one hand, we have this amazing chance to learn from a completely different form of life. But on the other, we could end up hurting ourselves or them. Exactly. It's complicated and there are no easy answers. But we have to be ready for it, right? Yeah, absolutely. If we're really serious about looking for life beyond Earth, we have to be prepared to find something completely alien, something that changes everything we thought we knew about life. Wow, this has been a wild ride. From those theoretical mirror molecules to the possibility of real mirror organisms, we've covered a lot today. It's definitely a topic that gets the imagination going. It does. I think I need some time to process all of this. Thanks for joining us today. It's been fascinating. It was my pleasure. Thanks for having me.